uh, but I'll read the standard opening statement and hope that by the time we get to the first case that Mason can join us so that we actually have a quorum to deal with that case. Uh, standard opening statement, this is the Northampton Conservation uh, Commission for the 10th of November, uh, 2022. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers to work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a continuation for a notice of intent for remediation of contaminated soil at the cutlery building, uh, a um, a, a uh, notice of intent for construction of an accessory residential structure and septic system on uh, North Farms Road, and a request for determination of applicability to determine if French drain construction is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, this also on North Farms Road, different address. Um, and then a request for a certificate of compliance uh, on Damon Road. Um, so we now have taken care of those preliminaries, and but we still, in order to open the first case, we need the uh, the, the cutlery building. We need a quorum of those who have participated it in the past. Uh, you could do the certificate of compliance if you wanted to. I know uh, Jim from Pride is here. All right. It's actually the last item on the agenda, but um, uh, the commission issued an order for the Pride station in the 1990s. Um, that may have been even before Mason's time, actually, although I'm not sure because he's been on for 40 odd years. Um, so he might actually have been here. Um, that uh, work appears to have been completed as proposed uh, and a requirement to submit an ongoing uh, uh, operating and management plan has been completed. Property owner is encouraged to clean and maintain the system, but the original order did not require an annual reporting. Um, so we're not going to try and add anything to that initial order of conditions. We're just going to certify that they've done what that initial order required. Uh, someone want to make a motion to that effect? Or is there any further inquiry discussion among commissioners uh, um, to dig into this distant past? And so moved as a motion. And is there a second? Yeah. Second by Jen. Uh, any further discussion? If not, um, Sarah, can we, as we pass this along, uh, ask politely that they continue their uh, an annual thing? We can't make it a condition when we didn't back 30 plus years ago. But. Yeah, absolutely. I would uh, communicate to the current property owner that it's important to continue this um, cleaning and maintenance and yep. potentially even do a little bit extra if, if possible. Right, good enough. So we have a motion made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, Sarah, you need a roll call? David? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you very much. Good enough. Hey. Um, we still have not a quorum for the cutlery case though. Let me try and call Mason and see if I can figure out how to get him on. Oh, here he is. There he is. All yeah. right. <laughs> We're cooking with gas now. <laughs> All right. So Mason is the phone number. I'll change his name. <laughs> can you hear us, Mason? You got your phone on mute, Mason.
Mason, can you say something just so we know you're live? <laughs> I'm gonna have to unmute your phone to, otherwise um, I'm- Mason, not... star six is unmute if you need to. I could not get mute to work last week. I finally had to leave it just off. Sarah, can you unmute him? I cannot, unfortunately. I can ask him to unmute, but I don't know what that does if you're on the phone. Mm -hmm. He is hearing weird music right now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Hey, Mason. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I just can't right. see anything. <laughs> I mean, I pressed the uh, the ID number and I went and hit the personal code and it says the personal code is incorrect, which was 584367 and it's not working for some reason. Well, we can at least um, open the hearing. We. Uh, in 15 minutes, due to a family emergency, are going to lose Jen and therefore lose our, um, uh, our, our quorum. So we will have to, at 5.59, um, uh, continue this case to a future meeting because we won't have the time to do justice to it. Um, so, um, but Mason, unless we have... Uh, um, screen sharing items that you need to see, uh, uh, you can participate on an audio basis for now. Okay. Um, I did uh, view the, uh, the original hearing and um, find the affidavit that I, I uh, did, did that so that uh, I should be okay to participate in the rest of the hearings. Okay. And Sarah has shared a lot of uh, material in the last few days um, on this case. Um, so uh, where we left it um, last time was uh, wanting the applicant to provide to the commission additional information um, about uh, 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 alternatives analysis um, and um, in, uh, rationale behind certain things that were addressed in the uh, OTO letter and the uh, applicant has uh, provided a written response. Um, and so the, the uh, I guess the first question that I'll ask is what I didn't see, I, I, as you recall, my um, desire in the last meeting was to see that there had in fact been consideration of a number of alternatives, um, not just uh, a statement that yes, we did, but an actual description of what some of those alternatives were. Um, and that if one of those uh, was to be uh, moving the material off site rather than to stockpile it on site, uh, why was that discarded? And, um, I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read that, but it's in the tens of millions of dollars to get this stuff uh, 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 to New Hampshire or Ohio. Apparently, there's a limited number of places that will accept uh, yeah. this kind of contamination. So um, that uh, said to me that, yes, the the economic consequences of taking it offsite were probably unrealistic. So I, that, that much I uh, uh, was satisfied by. Um, I didn't see uh, attention to um, why not develop a more robust uh, replication area somewhere in the project, um, given the disruption that is um, going to be caused by this project. So that would be one question that I would still have. Um, uh, you might start to answer today. Um, commissioners, if we have, since we only have 15 minutes, my thought is, if we can let the applicant know what questions we still have, um, we're not going to address it all today because we don't have enough time um, before we lose the quorum, but at least to make the applicant aware of what we'd like to have additional information about. For me, it's the uh, uh, 
discussion of, of replication at what was considered and what was ruled out and why not do more than what is currently planned. Um, I don't know if any other commissioners have additional questions. I have one about the chain link fence and whether it needs to be raised to allow wildlife to pass underneath it. I have no idea how high that should be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, my question was whether there needs to be fencing at all, and if so, why? Um, yeah. um, so the fencing would be another uh, yeah. question that we'd be seeking answers to. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, my only my question was um, there. I think they're filling what 510 square feet of the isolated wetland and. Uh, why there wasn't any replication, but apparently under our ordinance, um, that isn't a requirement. I was wondering why. Um, and my sense was it may not be a requirement, but we have uh, to exercise in our judgment that this is the, the least damaged, uh, least damaging practicable um, alternative that's being pursued. And therefore, uh, as part of our consideration of that, we can um, take into account how much replication is, is or is not being done, uh, which is why I'd like to have a more robust discussion about uh, uh, why or why not, uh, given what's proposed so far. Any other questions that uh, people would want to see the applicant address next time? Um, there were, uh, I, I'd be also interested in um, I I know the, uh, the I mean I I understood the this compound plastics I think it's called that is stabilizing. Um, what I didn't see anywhere was a reference to. Um, so is this a truly permanent solution? A, a century from now, will this stuff start to break down? Um, the uh, and and the the monitoring. Uh, wells that are ensuring that it doesn't migrate, whatever is in the soil doesn't migrate, um, how are they going to be uh, monitored essentially in, in perpetuity? I, I would think it would have to be um, in order to make sure that uh, it, it doesn't go anywhere, um, but at least what, what the monitoring plan is going forward in more detail. Um, because I I, uh, I can understand the uh, um, the need to keep giving them expense of taking it, taking material offsite. I can understand the desire to keep it on site, but then that immediately raises the question about um, uh, how do you make sure that this isn't just a, you know a decade or five decades or ten decades, but rather the, a, per, a truly permanent solution. Um, and I don't know the technology well enough to make that judgment. So I'd like to better uh, be better educated and help understand that. If nothing else, um, uh, we still have nine minutes left before we lose Jen, but, um, uh, and I, I apologize we, uh, for the difficulty getting started and for the um, need to have a quorum of people who have participated in prior discussions in this case. So we, we uh, can only proceed if we have that quorum. Um, so, but I don't know if in the meantime, the applicant would like to, uh, say anything or uh, put anything on the table for us to consider since we have a few minutes left before we do le lose our quorum. So let me just, if I could, Barry Fogel for the applicant. Um, when you say lose your quorum, so just so I'm clear, how many members are here tonight? There are five, including Mason on the phone, um, but uh, David is a new member, was not, um, a participant in the first her hearing. So David could watch the video and sign a Mullen affidavit. He correct? can't. He wasn't a commission member. Oh, he wasn't even a no, member. No, he yet? wasn't. He hadn't been sworn in yet. Does it require that to be the case? I mean, if he's a member when he watches the video, that should cover it. Uh, but he he wasn't a member of the commission when it had first happened. No, I understand that. I'm saying that he's, but he's a sworn member when he watches the video. That why we should check if that's the case. Even if Jen needs to leave and she could watch the video of the rest of the discussion, we'd like to carry on if, if we have members who are. But, all but he's, he's 
So, no, uh, so you, you wouldn't be able to participate in something that occurred prior. Because he, yeah, he, even if, uh, Barry, even if that were true, he wouldn't have um, listened and, and watched the videos prior to participating. So it would, uh, that seems like it doesn't work. Um, well, um, I made notes that you, I, want, I do have a question. When you use the term replication, what do you mean by that? I mean, I know what replication is, but replication of what particular aspect of the, of the area? What, what are you thinking of? Um, I don't have the uh, plan set in front of me. The, uh, there was a relatively limited, as I reviewed the plans, uh, uh, where my question came from, there was relatively little bit of uh, uh, attempting to uh, uh, replicate, and, and there's a, a lot of um, disruption in the ice, especially the isolated wetland. Um, and so, somewhere on the project, uh, uh, is it possible to ex have a more expansive and more comprehensive uh, replication for um, the damage that's being done there? No, but replication of what are you talking about? I mean, we're, we're talking about wetland replication. Yeah, but what wetland resource are you talking about? The isolated the wetland? Isolated, it would be the isolated wetland that's affected by the entrance, uh, the construction entrance, I believe. So you're, you're asking the applicant to look into what, creating an isolated wetland somewhere or expanding that just, isolated just wetland? Adding, adding on to the, to the isolated wetlands that's there, um, I think 510 square feet of it's going to be um, more or less permanently disturbed when you put your uh, construction road in. Yeah, and it's just just adding to that to to make up the the five hundred and ten is going to be. So yeah, so, uh, so destroyed. I know the are you, I know the I'm familiar with the word replication, obviously in terms of vegetated wetland. I'm just making sure that the chair, when he uses the term replication, that that's what you're speaking about. So are we on? We can we can evaluate what you're asking if you're speaking about replication of an area of the isolated wetland. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm speaking at this point without the plan set in front of me. Um, I'm, I'm speaking more generally. The, what's the the least damage that this project can do? Partly that's by minimizing the effect of damage, and partly that's by replicating um, the areas that were damaged. No, I, I get it. We've minimized the area. The design is the design. The question I'm asking is, what other than the isolated wetland, what is it that you have in mind that you're thinking of having replicated? Because you're destroying part of a wetland. So to in some and it doesn't have to be in, in that same place. It could be anywhere on the project. How do you recreate? Okay, um, the, my, my, the, the word wetland, we think of wetland resource area, and that covers bank and riverfront and floodplain. I'm just focusing and making sure we're not shooting at the wrong target. You're talking about replication of the vegetated wetland. Of, of the isolated wetland. Okay. The, the, the other thing about the chain link fence, I got a note on that, whether it can be removed or it's changed somehow for wildlife access, got that. You want some information about monitoring wells, and I know Lyons may be able to speak. Lyons, once a permanent solution is achieved and filed, groundwater monitoring is not required beyond that, correct? This is not a, a, this, the constituents of concern here. Are they, they're not mobile in groundwater? Is that I'm trying to see where you are. Uh, that's correct. We're, we're not monitoring groundwater now. Yeah, so, so we'll yeah, get you some information about that, but as part of the permanent solution, ultimately monitoring wells will be removed. Um, but that will get you an answer about the permanence, if you will, of the, of the remedy. And I think in the five minutes we have left, I'd actually like to hear from, or if, if Mr. Hudson, I think was his name, um, filed something that had to do with property values and we're prepared to speak briefly to that now but if you want I don't know whether he uh, has that, that to add, but that's we, that's not something that's within the purview of the conservation commission good because we we thought it was an invalid analysis anyway but the the, the, the very simple and single point we would well make it may it may be a valid analysis but not before this commission right we actually 
the, the properties around this cutlery factory. It, you, you don't need to address it, Barry. We, Thank you. We're happy to hear that. All right. Um, we, before we run out of time for Jen, uh, let's right. have a motion to continue um, uh, this case. Uh, the, the applicant have a preferred date? Should it be the very next commission meeting? Which when is your next meeting? <laughs> because we have um, in normally two weeks, but that's Thanksgiving, so we won't meet then. So it would be the 8th of December, Sarah? Correct. You want uh, to do it that? De definitely the 8th. Then that's the soonest hearing you're going to have. So you're not moving. Rather than having one that week of Thanksgiving, you're skipping over to mm -hmm. December? That's a normal practice, right? Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not, if, unless you want to schedule a special meeting, we're, we'll take the eighth, obviously. So, can I get a, a motion from the commissioner to uh, continue this case to the eighth of December? And, uh, and it would be at five thirty. Right, the first up. I move that we move. So moved. It. Continue this. So we got, uh, I don't know who spoke for us, Paul or Mason, but uh, one of them <laughs> went first and the other one is a second. Yes. Yeah, I'll second them. Okay, Mason, second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, good luck, Jen. Yeah, thanks for the time tonight. We'll see you on the 8th. And <laughs> we'll submit something in response to your questions, hopefully in advance, so that we will have a chance to review them. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy Thanksgiving. Thank and you. you. All right. We have now our um, next case which is a request for determination of applicability to determine if French drain, French drain construction in the buffer zone is subject, subject to the Wetlands Ordinance or the Wetlands Act is at uh, 61 North Farms Road. Uh, you, you missed one, Kevin. Oh, no, did I? Yeah, well, you read the you read half of one and half of it. So it's a, the notice of intent for the- I see, okay, sorry, yeah. all right. They're both North Farms Road and like, Switch them around, right? So this is uh, accessory residential structure, septic system, and related improvements. Yep. This is at three seventy two North Farms Road. Yep. Uh, Who, hi, go I'm, ahead. Here, I'm here to represent um, Laura Minsky and and uh, Bram Wilson. Um, we came before the commission a while back now, and thank you for continuing to this point. Um, I just kind of maybe worth. Going back in time a little bit, um, when we came before you, we, we presented um, the location of the proposed accessory building and the removal of some of the asphalt parking area uh, in the front yard. And during that meeting, we didn't have answers about the precise location of the septic system at that point. And so we talked around what the possibilities were and the commission um, chose to uh, allow us to continue the meeting so that we could get more information about the septic work. Um, also, look into a little more about the location of the building itself. And what we have come back before you with is a revised plan that shows the um, the septic system, the removal of the asphalt uh, driveway uh, that's currently at the roundabout in front of the house, and then along with it, a, a decision to remove a portion of the, the house that's closest to the river river itself where it's a garage attached garage that um is in disrepair and it was uh decided that that was an okay thing to let go of as well as part of this work and then um we are showing a proposed building that meets the the riverfront redevelopment standards um to accomplish all the work that was on this property Um, would you like to look at plans together or, and yeah, walk through that it? would be good. Although, uh, Mason, you have a, a, a copy from Sarah that you can see while we're referring to uh, a, a shared screen. Hi. Oh, you're here. Yes, hey, I am here. You're in two places at once, Mason. Now you're still on the phone and you're there live. 
Yeah. Oh, you yeah. can actually, yes, please share the screen. Uh, I re-entered it, re it all over again. Over so. Whoops. Sarah, would you like me to share or do you, do you put stuff, would you like to put stuff up? You can go ahead, Joe. Okay, great. Um, let me do that. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, let's start with this one. This kind of gives a general overview of the, the project itself. Um, are you seeing the, the plan that we have here? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I tried to color code it just to, to draw your eyes to the, to the main features. Um, so these are the, the elements of the project. Uh, the outer blue line here is the 200 foot riverfront area. Um, this is the 100 foot. And then um, this is the uh, mean annual high water. Um, this is not a, a currently a wetland. Uh, just draw. Just this is a, a proposed enhancement area that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so the project itself involves um, removing uh, all of this asphalt that's currently uh, a circular driveway um, on the where the current main entrance of the house is, along with removing the um, this garage portion of the house uh, and. They're proposing um, building this accessory building out behind the um, the current building, and then um, building a moving the this parking area off outside of the riverfront area, having a permeable pathway to this this proposed building structure. Um, the plan just shows kind of a, doesn't show the the septic on it. Uh, I can show you that one in a second. Um, this other line here is just a, a mock-up of kind of a proposed um, limits of work uh, erosion control uh, that that would encompass the um, the down gradient portion of the project area. Um, this, while we're showing it here, this um, this little corner where the river bends um, is part of the existing yard space right now, um, and what we're doing as part of this project, um, and in in Kind of the spirit of the compliance with improving the riverfront as part of the the um, redevelopment standards, we're proposing uh, a vegetation enhancement by planting native species um, of shrubs in this area. Um, and I chose this kind of corner because it could be easily identified and monumented to be a, a permanent um, improvement to the to the riverfront area. Um, if if you have any questions about this, we could stop here, and or else I can oh, just show you. One question about the, uh, uh, the 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 enhancement area is that bollards. Uh, how how would you demarcate that to say uh, this is protected now? Don't don't bring your mower down here. Yeah, um, I've through other projects in other towns. I feel like the um, often better to ask is instead of propose because the commissions have some ideas in mind. Um, bollards are are a good one, although they depends on what they look like, but um, sometimes placing, uh, you know, a large boulders, but mm -hmm. that would mean, you know, sourcing and, and moving out there. Um, also, yeah, open to any any suggestions that would, you know, signage sometimes would be is is worthwhile um, placing the, you know, uh, a couple um, fence posts with signage on it has been done before too. Right. We've normally um, encouraged uh, boulders that uh, cannot be easily moved by one or two individuals. Uh, you yeah. know, something that uh, because otherwise a subsequent owner is likely to say, "Oh, look, we got this extra piece of land we can um, mow uh, right down to the river." So uh, normally we've uh, 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 like two and a half, three foot um, boulders placed yeah. uh, reasonably close together so that it's obvious this is a barrier. Okay. Have you had any other um, any other success stories, or is, that's pretty much the Ball best bollards, one? Bollards, uh, usually stone bollards or, or uh, uh, concrete bollards, uh, have also been used uh, okay. for success. It's sort of an aesthetic decision by the owner in some ways. Right. Yeah, We'd I like to understand. have something that's visible and permanent. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions about this? Move on. Okay. So I'll show you quickly. Uh, I think I have to stop and then share something else. Let me do that. Um, the next figure here is the uh, the design for the septic system. 
um, the current, this is the current septic tank here. And um, what we are showing is the kind of connection route between the two buildings to the clean out um, and proposed tank. And then that goes into the leaching field, um, which is within the area where uh, kind of spans the, the driveway area, the current driveway area that will be removed. So it sort of um, ended up being one of the only places where we could fit this this type of system as well as get it into an area where it would have the the least amount of impact on the uh, area and part of it is within the area that is already going to be um, revegetated from uh, pavement to loam. Um, this system involves a small amount of grading on the downslope side and just is shown by the the purple hatch marks here. Mm -hmm. Questions from commissioners? I'm looking for the driveway. The driveway is this area here. Okay. That's, that's going to be completely um, removed from the site and, mm -hmm. uh, and converted back to, to lawn, which this is going to be the, the news proposed driveway, which was uh, kind of was outside of the riverfront area. Okay. For the, more of a parking area than a driveway. Thank you. Did the old uh, septic tank have a leach field with it? Um, you know, actually that I don't know. Um, uh, Laura's on, on the call. Laura, do you happen to know that answer? It does. I have like the title five or nine from when we bought it, if you'd like to see it. I can also just give you a general idea of where it is. Yeah, where, where is it? Oh, cool. um, okay, on this drawing, it would be like sort of near those, the what I think represents a tree. Um, so You're, no, further back, it's like by the wetlands. It leaches towards oh, the- Oh, it down this way? Yeah, around there, but closer to the tree a little bit north. Okay. So the yellow line is a, is a pipe going from the tank to- Yeah, you can see the old- Oh, line. yeah, you're right. That is it. That yep. so it's coming from the house here to the tank yeah. and then out. Yeah. There. Oh, I didn't see the line there. No, it's good? almost invisible. Right. So do you yep. plan to remove that? Um no. Typically okay. with these, they they fill the tank with uh with gravel and leave it and disconnect it. And so okay. I think the intention would be just to leave everything okay. in place. If, uh, if you can go back to the uh, first figure, the uh, um, yeah, my question is, uh, why have the new uh, accessory structure uh, that far back from the parking area? Why not move it closer to? the edge of the riparian zone rather than staying closer to the middle of it. Yeah, we, we talked discussed this a bunch in the first meeting and um and Lauren Brown discussed it. And the 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 main reason is the the character of, the, of their property and the location for the building was more aesthetically pleasing keeping it away from the road. There's um, a neighbor that's very that's not shown here, it has a close property. Uh, so it it created kind of an alley effect to have these three structures stacked up on it onto each other. So there was a initially we had a lot of concerns about adding to potential drainage problems. Um, so keeping it further back was ideal. And then with the ultimately the main, the final like uh, beneficial uh, decision of having this here was the connection route between for the septic between these two buildings getting it to here and so that uh, to avoid having to root around the buildings uh, with with this to connect to the system it made it it just made more sense and then also just knowing that we were we were meeting the um, riverfront redevelopment standards so the uh, the location was suitable.
Right. Uh, can you say a little more about the, uh, I mean, the part of the argument, to, since our, our uh, obligation as commissioners to see, to, to permit things uh, that among the alternatives available are the least um, yeah. intrusive, least damaging. So well, through the redevelopment standards, there, there's no requirement for, for alternatives analysis. Joe, did you switch this to a, a full redevelopment? I know it was initially not submitted that way. Yes. Okay. All right, fair enough. I didn't catch that. So, um, if you know if this meets the riverfront redevelopment standards, um, which the proposal went through in the application, then a, the full alternatives analysis isn't required. It doesn't prevent the commission from having those discussions and asking those questions. Right. So, and, so uh, it, but, uh, I'd just be interested in the the the, the septic connection, um, wanting to avoid having it go through the existing house, um, I assume is the problem. And, um, it's part, so yeah, <laughs> it's part of the problem. So the, um, yeah, I understand your concerns and they're good questions. I think uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, uh, what what we wanted to demonstrate was that, you know, the applicant was was very much interested in improving their 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 property. There, there's a substantial reduction in impervious surfaces on the property as a result of the work. Um, you know, we were in the, uh, in the narrative, you know, we're, we're 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 going from 9.2 percent impervious surfaces, and re, by this removing the asphalt and and creating the building, we're dropping that in half down to 4.7 percent. So the you know the having of of the mm -hmm. of the impact is on the on the riverfront area and, and vegetating it is is a kind of a is not a, a common uh, thing in in projects to do, um, and then plus adding the the, the en enhancement was kind of a, an extra uh, interest of the applicant to you know to do right by their property and try to and improve it. Understood. Yeah. And Understood. What's the current condition of the area where the proposed new structure is intended to be located? It's yeah, right here. It's lawn. It's a play structure um lawn and um yeah there's some gardens as well other questions from commissioners no i don't i don't have any questions mason david any more oh. Should I stop sharing this or? Um, well, it's helpful to look at it for a few more minutes, I think, for me anyway. Um, okay. So, uh, the, and when you talk about cutting the impervious surface in half, that includes the new parking area, or is the parking area going to be pervious pavers or some other form of uh, pervious this surface? This area up here? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. Outside the. Outside our jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah, I didn't include that. Um, so the 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 nine point um, is just inside. Nine point two is only in the riverfront. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. If no other questions, um, someone want to make a um, any other comments, Sarah? Before we close the hearing. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I I don't have anything else to request. From the applicant, uh, you know, it's just sort of figuring out the the details of the conditions. I think if that's if the commission is ready to make all the appropriate findings. Yeah. So, um, given the fact that this is inside the uh, riparian zone, that, um, that we want to, you know, all the, all the normal conditions, uh, uh, erosion controls during work all, all that sort of stuff um but we can and when we close the hearing we can see if other com commissioners have uh, additional um thoughts about special conditions that we might want to add be beyond the standard so uh someone want to make a motion to close the hearing moved second and moved. second by david mm -hmm. uh all in favor, Sarah? 
Mason? Yes. David? Yes. Jen? Oh, oh, uh, Paul? <laughs> uh, yes, for Paul. <laughs> and Kevin? Yes. Yeah, okay, so the, the hearing is closed. Um, and uh, so the, just given that it's inside the riparian zone, what, what additional um, conditions do we want to impose? We, one is going to be, uh, uh, and we'll leave it up to the applicant and Sarah, if it's okay with you, about whether it's bollards or boulders that create a permanent visual uh, barrier for uh, so the, any subsequent owner doesn't just go mowing along happily down to the river uh, in mm -hmm. that new uh, area that you're um, developing. Uh, so that would be one additional condition. Uh, uh, any other special conditions beside the uh, the normal standard the conditions we do for this kind of project? No. No. Any, th any that you can think of, Sarah? I don't think so. Um, I did note that there was no erosion control on the septic plan. So it no, was, I I just put it on the Yeah, the, that, that's the fine. I, the, it, they're tied together because of the driveway work, but just hmm. so it should the septic work begin with a different contractor in a, in a different timeline, just communicate that that erosion control is needed. I kind of anticipated you would want a pre-construction walkthrough or- Yes. Or, yeah, yeah. So. That's part of the normal yeah. standard <laughs> conditions. You're right. All right, um, so we have standard conditions and a couple of the special conditions. Any other discussion or uh, added conditions? If not, um, someone want to make or a uh, motion to order issue an order of conditions uh, uh, as we just discussed. I move. Seconded. Made and seconded. Further discussion? If not, all in favor? Chair? Mason? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. All okay. right. Thank you all very much. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. And Bye -bye. we're right at 620, and therefore um, go to the next uh, North Farms Road case. Uh, this is a determination of applicability to determine if French drain construction in the buffer zone is subject to the Wetlands Ordinance or the Wetlands Act. Who's here to? Talk about that. Hi, I'm Richard Baker. I'm the applicant. Hi. So uh, we've seen um, the application materials. Uh, uh, you want to summarize, and then um, I don't know if you have anything you want to put on shared screen, but uh, at least summarize the project verbally before we go sure. through it. We're we're uh, newly re uh, arrived homeowners within the last six months, and we're making improvements to our house. We moved here from Minnesota, as it happens, um, and uh, high on our list of improvements is to direct surface runoff away from the house, from the slope above the house, and so the idea is to install the French drain to do that. Um, it will uh, daylight about 50 feet from the wetland uh, into a lawn. Um, and it will be, uh, the French drain will be about 100 feet in length or something like that. Actually, I don't know offhand. You may have that in front of you, but uh, anyway, that's the gist of it. Um, and it's to prevent water from coming into our basement, which we have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so hopefully that can relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people can. In my understanding, this isn't all that uncommon. And uh, so we're just learning as we go. And I uh, welcome any questions people have. Uh, the only question I had was uh, um, at the point when the uh, uh, pipe daylight um, from the water collected by the, the French drain. Is there, uh, I don't, I wasn't sure about the topography and how much uh, of a gradient there was and was the risk of uh, erosion at the uh, point of discharge? No, it's, it's actually very gentle right there and uh, just very slowly slopes over toward the wetland. Um, 
I, I don't, I, I can't tell you the, the actual grade, but it's, it's just gentle lawn. And uh, so far in the six months we've been here, we have not seen any pooling in that lawn or anything like that. It just uh, uh, runs off into the wetland, anything that hits there. Okay. Other questions from commissioners? No, I can sympathize with the wet basement. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. And where we coming from Minnesota where you, you cannot have a wet basement, period. Uh, here well, people I guess learn to tolerate it, but we're it's kind of we're kind of averse to that idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um this is uh see what the rest of the commissioners think, but um uh that it's the work is going to be in an area that's currently lawn um and should not have any impact on the resource area uh, as as designed um or as described um so we could uh, issue uh um uh, let's see which, which negative box? negative with box three uh, yeah someone want to make a motion to that effect well, I move that we issue a negative determination and check box three. That uh, it is within a buffer zone, but will not constitute an alteration. Um, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Mason? Sarah? Yes. David? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. Good. Welcome to Northampton. Thank you all very much. I, I, I well, welcome to the to... world of very high groundwater. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, I'll be interested to learn more about the Conservation Commission. Thank you a lot. You have a good sure. evening. And I, I'm okay. sorry I missed you at the site visit. I wanted to meet your yeah. dog. Yeah. <laughs> the dog has inside and wanted to say hi. <laughs> Another good. time, Sarah. Thank you. All right. Thanks a good. lot. Thanks. All right. Have a good evening. You too. Um, so anything else that we have to discuss for tonight? Like Paul's in his car? Like what? Like yes, Paul's like in his car? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I am pre commissioned for a seven o'clock meeting, and now I can get to it on time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a question. Um, at, how would we know when it's time to start meeting in person? Mm -hmm. Up to the commission, according to Sarah. But so we got a winner. There's no requirement us. that the commission meet remotely um, through the, the governor's extension of some of the emergency provisions to the open meeting law. You, you have the ability to do so. You know, the mayor's left it up to every board and commission. And some of them are meeting in person, some of them are doing a hybrid, but it, it's up to you. Um, I'm happy to do what, whatever you all prefer. I'd be happy to start up in the spring. <laughs> yeah, I think the winter is going to be uh, a bit challenging. Well, well we only like have one vehicle, and my wife works during tax season, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not in any hurry. Although I, you know, I, I've so far managed to remain COVID free, so um, yeah, I'd like to too. continue uh -huh. to yep. do that, and so. Um, Right. If we and, and what I keep hearing from my doctor friends is that yeah this is there's there's a lot of even apart from COVID and the flu there's just a lot of bad respiratory stuff going on and uh, oh, so virus well, let's Pardon get me? through the flu season yeah mm. that's good, good. Idea. meeting that's remotely good. does facilitate more participation as well both from the public and from commissioners like Jen had to step out for a family emergency, you know, if we were meeting in person, I, I suspect she probably just wouldn't have wouldn't been able to attend have at, all. Been able to come at all. Right. Yeah, or it could, have, it could have been hybrid, I suppose. Is that always a possibility? It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I believe both meeting rooms available in the city are, are both set up for hybrid mm -hmm. meetings now. So that, that allows people to watch on Zoom or on, on YouTube. I don't know which, which one. I haven't done it yet. Um, but they wouldn't well, be able to participate if they're at home. So they can just just watch. Oh, you can't you can't participate at all. If it's uh, so commissioners could, 
potentially, mm -hmm. and that, that might be an option, but members of the public, just because it's incredibly difficult to run a meeting with yeah. members of the public in the room and online, um, yeah. would only be able to participate if they're meeting in person. What teachers have been through in the past two years. Yeah. With the David yeah. right. I'm one of them, right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, so David, since this is your first official meeting when you're actually a member, you sat in before. Um, so uh, to, to, we should introduce ourselves a little bit and say what we do or used to do. Um, in my case, um, oh great! But uh, so, uh, so you're a teacher? Yeah. So I I've been teaching at uh, UMass um, in environmental engineering for well since 1985. Yeah. And, um, I'm now in a in a slow down off ramp uh, to retirement, uh, and uh, mostly mostly working, trying to get my graduate students out the door and uh, catch up. <laughs> good, yeah, good, good. Welcome, yeah, welcome. Thanks. Glad to have you thanks. on board. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm the the non um, technically knowledgeable member of this committee. Uh, most most people have uh, some kind of. Um, official, although with Paul joining us, I think you, Paul and I both now are not technically trained in this stuff, although we spend a lot of time outdoors, Paul even more than me, but um, uh, the uh, but I, I was a, a corporate uh, executive vice president of a couple of big mm -hmm. companies um, over my career, and um, but was always outside, and when I finally retired and didn't have to live on airplanes anymore, I introduced myself to Claire Higgins, who was the mayor at the time, and um, um, she said, oh, well, here's a list of 30 odd committees and commissions. Um, <laughs> see which one you might be interested in. And, uh, so it's been, I think, 14 years uh, that I've been on the Conservation Commission. Maybe it's yeah. 15 by now. But wow. yeah. yeah. So glad to have you on board. Yeah, that's great. Good. Yeah. Who's so, next? Paul? Yeah, David. Um, I've just completed a glide path to retirement and decided I wanted to keep doing what I was doing in my profession as a psychotherapist. So I have a small private practice in Florence one day a week oh. uh, after having a behavioral health department and a large multidisciplinary medical group for 38 years. So um, I, I work one day a week and have six day weekends. Uh, which is really nice and it, it, it allows me to see kayak and uh, backpack and hike in the Adirondacks, the White Mountains and various other parts of North America. Um, and so I have a fascinating interest in, in protecting um, uh, vulnerable areas of the environment and was also very involved in um, getting the Mineral Hills Conservation um, oh, Area um, established um, with the long battle with the quarry operator and uh, it was successful and now there's a beautiful trail system out there. Yeah, that's a great resource. We, we've sort of discovered it ourselves uh, during COVID. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and Paul, have you climbed all of the high peaks in the, uh, in the decks? I have. Um, some of them uh, <laughs> Three or four times, um, many of them in winter. Um, all of the peaks in the, above four thousand feet in the White Mountains, and then um, the uh, highest peak in North America and California. Um, so um, it's <laughs> the quest continues. <laughs> Mason, yes. Um. I've got a BS degree in wildlife biology from UMass. Oh, really? Long yeah. time ago. <laughs> 67, when I graduated from that fine institute. Yeah, good. I wish they had environmental engineering then. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just starting up at that yeah. point. Yeah, it was very new. Um, but I, I worked uh, as a fishery biologist for the uh, New York State Conservation Department for a while. Mm. And uh, mm. then for the survey company and get to see both sides of the notice of intent. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was presenting notices of intent to other conservation commissions, plus being on this one. Mm -hmm. And I've been Mason on- Mason has been on this one for how many years, Mason? 
46. <laughs> Another 46er. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. for 50. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. And Great. Sarah, you know, um, mm -hmm. but Sarah, you've been recently promoted. Uh, I have. So with, with Ray, Wayne's retirement, um, I'm now the assistant director of planning and sustainability, which is exciting, but I, I do look forward to continuing to staff the Conservation Commission. Great. Yeah, Did I get you better pay or just an attaboy? Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> um, so you know, in, in addition to staffing the Conservation Commission, um, I've also worked with the Historic Commission, Local Historic District Commission. Um, my background's in planning as well as environmental science and public administration. Um, I'm also an avid skier and, and hiker. Um, I'm excited. It's finally starting to get cold. I'm getting yeah. issues with skiing. It's been too fun. Um, yes. I, I just today got my uh, uh, pass at, at Notchview um, for this next season. So Very nice. <laughs> oh, I'm finally off the cane. Oh, oh, congratulations. Mason's been getting bionic body parts periodically oh, yeah. over the last few years. <laughs> both uh, both hips are uh, now replaced. <laughs> wow. mm. oh. yeah. Good. So what's next? <laughs> uh, I, I get How this mask and I become RoboCop or something. <laughs> or Robo Commissioner. He's doing <clears throat> All right, so I think uh, my inclination would be not to go back inside for meetings quite yet. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm yep. still a little conservative about that. Um, I yep. wear masks when I go shopping and all that sort of stuff. So I, I, I'd say let's wait till we get past flu season. So maybe February, March, sometime, but uh, we can revisit the question. But Good. great. All right, and so two weeks from today is thank is Thanksgiving, so we won't meet, but uh, we'll meet uh, uh, four weeks from today at, at or rest, uh, not quite four. Yeah, I guess it is just about four weeks. The eighth, isn't that four weeks? Anyway, whatever it is, we'll meet on December eighth. Yeah, and visit this uh, cutlery case right off, and um, so we. Uh, we, we, we it's not a simple case. And um, so uh, I yeah. encourage all of us, including myself, to revisit the papers because there's so much in there that when a couple of weeks go by, I don't retain it all. So I'm going to have to take oh. a look at it again the day or two before. Uh, and Randy so will be back to join us for that meeting as well. And he'll watch the video of tonight's hearing. So he'll be able to participate. And and good news on uh, Randy well, will be? behalf of Randy. He, uh, his plans have changed and he has more time than anticipated. So he ap applied for reappointment to the committee. Oh, he'll be oh, back. Great. Again, great, which great, is great. nice. <laughs> Good. Um, and he'll, he can get go up to speed so he can actually participate in that hearing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just uh, an aside for David um, when we're in a complex um, situation with, the, with hearings, especially in a topic that most of us don't know. When you get into toxic material and soils, it, we did uh, the member that we did have that um, was familiar with that is now working for DEP, so it would be a conflict of interest. He so we had to resign the commission. The commission. But, uh, oh, okay. We yeah. do have the option of a third party review, which is what we did in this case. Oh. It, uh, it costs the applicant a little bit more money, but it, Third party reviews what the his engineers and stuff came up. It was uh, information to the uh, commission to look for and questions to ask in hearings. So who who was the per, who was the member who just left uh, because of a conflict? Uh, Jason, Jason Perry. Yeah, Perry's last name. Okay. okay. So he got a job with the State Department of Environmental Protection. Yeah, and since the that's the, the state agency under which the uh, the umbrella of wetlands permits are issued. Right, right. Actually, he, my, essentially, he had a conflict with, yeah, with every right, permit, right. which is unfortunate. My, my wife worked pretty much her whole career for the Western region of DEP. Right. Uh -huh. so, which, which division? Well, she started as she was in um, um, most recently the drinking water. 
Okay. Uh, group, uh, but um, she had been in wayside cleanup for many years too. Well, then she, yeah, she would have come across Jason probably in the yeah, years. Yeah, she probably knows him. <laughs> yep. So, do you work for what? Iron Bond? Or, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, good okay. to see everybody. And, uh, have a good Thanksgiving, and we'll get together on the 8th of December, and uh, I'll probably send a reminder note for my own purposes as, as much as anything else to say, let's refresh our memories of all of this complicated stuff around the cutlery, because as Mason knows longer than I have, but back 15, 16 years ago, when I first joined the commission, it was already cutlery building cases going on then, and oh, yeah. uh, it's been going on forever, so yeah. it's, a, it's not a simple project. But. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank All right. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Bye. Folks.